In this video, we're going to learn about covalent bonding. We're going to recap valency and then apply the knowledge of valency to draw dot and cross diagrams to show how covalent bonds form in molecules. When reacting, atoms will react to obtain a full outer shell of electrons. They can do this by gaining electrons, losing electrons or sharing electrons. Today we're focusing on covalent bonding and in covalent bonding they will share electrons in order to get a full outer shell. So let's first look at the periodic table and the groups to see how many electrons they have in their outer shell. Group 1, an example is lithium, has one electron in its outer shell. In group 2, all the elements have two electrons in their outer shell. Over to group 3, all the elements will have three electrons in their outer shell. In group four, they will all have four electrons in their outer shell. In group five, they will all have five electrons in their outer shell. In group six, they will have six electrons in their outer shell. And in group seven, they will have seven electrons in their outer shell. Group eight don't really react because they already have a full outer shell of electrons. So that's why they're called group zero or group eight. So to summarize the important information there, the group number is at the top of each column and whatever the group number is, it tells you how many electrons there are in the outer shell. Now let's think about valency. Valency is the number of electrons it needs to gain or lose in order to get a full outer shell of electrons. It's going to do this the easiest way possible. So for group one, the easiest way to get a full outer shell of electrons would be to lose an electron rather than gaining seven. So the valency of group one is one. In group two, the easiest way to get a full outer shell of electrons is to lose two electrons, so the valency is two. In group three, the easiest way to get a full outer shell of electrons is to lose three electrons, so the valency is three. In group four, it can gain four or lose four, so the valency is four. In group five, the easiest way to get a full outer shell of electrons is to gain three, so the valency is three. In group 6, it could gain 2, so the valency is 2. And in group 7, the easiest way to get a full outer shell is to gain 1. Group 8 doesn't have a valency because they already have a full outer shell. And the last one is hydrogen, which is out on its own. The electronic configuration of hydrogen just has one electron in its outer shell. And the first shell can only hold two electrons, so the easiest way for it to get a full outer shell is to gain one electron, so its valency is one. Now what I would do when you get into an exam and you get given a periodic table, is write that across the top. So it goes one, two, three, four, three, two, one. And that will help you in many different topics in your exam, and it will help you in covalent bonding. So covalent bonding focuses on the non-metals, which is this side of the periodic table. So let's look at an example, hydrogen chloride. The first thing in covalent bonding you need to do is draw the two atoms and they are overlapping so that you have a place to draw the shared electrons. Focus on the hydrogen first. The hydrogen has a valency of one. That means it needs to gain one electron to get a full outer shell. It can gain that electron by sharing an electron. It has one electron in its outer shell. So it's one electron goes in the shared area. Now let's look at chlorine, which is over here. It has seven electrons in its outer shell. That means I'm going to be drawing seven dots. And because its valency is one, then one of those seven dots are shared. So I put one in the shared area, and then I put the other six around the outside. When I add those up, there are now eight electrons in its outer shell because it has the seven dots and then it can also use the cross. So that now means that both of them have a full outer shell of electrons. Let's look at chlorine. So we've started off with our two atoms of chlorine overlapped. Chlorine is in group seven of the periodic table. So my two numbers I'm focusing on are my seven and my one. My one meaning that one electron is shared so I'll put that in the shared area. My seven, meaning that there should be seven X's in total. So I put the other six around the outside. My other chlorine atom is exactly the same. One electron is shared. 
because the valency is 1, and then the other 7 go round the outside. If I add them up now, uh, this chlorine has access to 8 electrons, and this chlorine has 8 electrons, so they both have a full outer shell of electrons. Our next example is slightly more difficult. It is water, H2O, and water has an almost Mickey Mouse-like shape. We'll start off with the hydrogen. So hydrogen have one electron in their outer shell. Their valency is one, which means that one electron is shared. So for each of the hydrogens, they're going to share one electron. So I'll put their electron in the shared area. Then let's look at the oxygen. The oxygen is in group six. So my two key numbers are the six and the valency of two. Two, meaning there are two electrons that need to be shared in order for it to get a full outer shell. Because there are two places it could share, it could share over here, or it could share here. I'm going to split them evenly between those two points. So I'll put one electron into each of them. I then have the rest of the electrons to put on the outside of the oxygen. So I put my four there. Now if I check, I have six dots and two of them are shared and in total the oxygen can have eight in its outer shell. So that is its dot and cross diagram. Our next example is methane and methane has the formula CH4. I'll start first with my hydrogen. Remember hydrogen have one electron. It's in the first shell so to fill the first shell it takes one more, which means its valency is one. So that's one electron that has to be shared. So for each of the hydrogen, I'm going to share one electron. Now let's look at carbon. Carbon is in group four and its valency is four. That means all four of its outer shell electrons need to be shared. Because there are four places that I can put it, I'll put one electron into each of the four places. Now if I look, carbon has eight electrons in its outer shell and each of the hydrogens have two electrons in their outer shell so all their outer shells are full. We can have double bonds too and oxygen shows this well so if I look at oxygen find it on the periodic table it has six electrons in its outer shell because it's in group number six and its valency is two which means two of them are shared so I'm going to put two electrons in the shared area the other four around the outside and for the other oxygen I'll do the same. I'll put two in the shared and the other four around the outside. That means each oxygen now has eight electrons in its outer shell and we have formed a double bond in the middle because there are two pairs of electrons. The last example we're going to look at is carbon dioxide. Let's look at the carbon first. Carbon is in group four of the periodic table. Its valency is four that means all four of its electrons should be shared. There are two places it can share them, so it puts two in each. Then I look at my oxygen. Again, oxygen is group six, so it will have six electrons, six crosses to draw. Two of them are going to be shared. So I'll put two in the shared area and the other four around the outside. And the same for the other oxygen. I put the two in the shared area and the other four around the outside. Now my oxygens all have eight electrons in their outer shell and my carbon has eight electrons in its outer shell. I'd like you to pause here and try bromine, nitrogen and ammonia. Press play when you're ready to see the answers. Remember, do dots for one and crosses for the other. It doesn't matter which way round you choose them. Let's look at the answer to bromine. Bromine is in group 7. That means there are 7 electrons in the outer shell. Because its valency is 1, then one of the electrons is shared. So first of all, I put my 1 electron in the shared area, and then my other 6 around the outside. And for the other bromine, I do the same. I put 1 in the shared area, and my other 6 around the outside. Now both my bromine have 8 electrons in their outer shell. My next example was nitrogen. You find nitrogen in group 5 in the periodic table. That means there's going to be 5 dots and 5 crosses. Because its valency is 3, 3 of the electrons will be shared for each atom. So I put 3 in the shared area, 
And then my other two, to get up to my total of five, are not shared. For my other nitrogen atom, I do the same. I put three in the shared area because its valency is three and the other two are not shared. Now if I check, both nitrogen atoms have eight electrons in their outer shell. The last one you had to do was ammonia, which has the formula NH3. Starting off with the hydrogen, remember hydrogen have one electron and their valency is one. That means that one electron is shared. So for my three hydrogen, I put one electron in the shared area. Now my nitrogen, it's in group five. That means there's going to be five dots to draw. And because its valency is three, three of them will be shared. So I put three in the shared area and two of them that aren't shared. Now my nitrogen has eight electrons in its outer shell and my hydrogen each have two. So in the summary, if you're asked to draw a covalent molecule, follow the three simple steps. Step one, write the valency across the top of your periodic table. Remember, one, two, three, four, three, two, one. Step two, Use the group number to tell you how many dots or crosses you need to draw. And finally, use the valency to tell you how many of the electrons should be shared. Thanks for listening. Hope this has helped you with your covalent bonding.